All right, we're off on another adventure. Thank you for joining us. And check this out, a Fujifilm camera. This is my first time shooting on Fuji. This year, I wanna try to expand my horizons on different cameras I try that's outside of Sony and Canon. This and the Nikon Z9, like a bunch of you guys have requested that I check it out. And by the way, uh, thank you to our sponsor, DJI, for sponsoring this episode. This is the RS3 Mini. Love that you're trying to walk and vlog on this trail. What? Look, uh, look like, at oh, this. Oh, all rocking. the rocks and all poop too? And I'm like dual wielding cameras. <laughs> Luckily, the RS3 Mini is so lightweight that it's not, you know, you like how I plugged in our sponsor? <laughs> Lightweight. Shameless. That is why I like it. But anyways, this is the Fujifilm X-H2S. And this is not a new camera. It's been out for a while. So it's definitely it's not one of those flashy new products. But what they do have going for them is Fujifilm's been making film since the 30s. And these days, most of us are shooting with digital sensors because first, it's way less expensive than shooting on actual film. And it's just faster and just overall simpler. But as good as these digital sensors are, there still is that film look that a lot of us want to try to achieve. So I am curious if Fujifilm has been able to take a lot of what they've learned throughout the decades of making film and been able to apply some of that to this digital sensor. So right now we're filming at 6.2K in H.265. And what's even more impressive is that this camera can record 6.2K in ProRes internally in a three by two open gate. But right now I'm filming in F-Log2 to get the most amount of dynamic range and I have all image stabilization turned off because I have the gimbal. Now in F-Log2, the minimum ISO is at 1250, which is where I'm at right now. I actually have a ND1000 on there and that's how I'm able to open up to an F1.4. And this will be an interesting test to see how the autofocus is working here. I could turn this around and does it detect my face? Oh yeah, so focus is on me. So, I mean, it seems like it's usable autofocus, but man, look at these mountains up here. These are insane. You know what that means. Ah. Thank you for doing that sound, Carrie. You're, you're the best. I got you. This is just my 3.5 inch, but check it out. New O3 air unit in there. So I don't have to attach another camera up top. Now, I only got one battery, so. Let's make this count. Dang, this is by far the biggest dive I've ever done. Oh, I'm still falling, geez. Oh, that was fun. That was a long dive. It just was just like falling, falling. Check the watch. All right, so now we went ahead and turned on IBIS. I'm on the 18 mil prime right here, but this is an APS-C, so there's a crop factor, I think around 1.5. So this 18 is like a 27 mil. We're staying at the Cosmo because it's supposed to be a really great dog-friendly hotel. And we got hooked up with a pretty awesome room, apparently. I'm scared we'll never want to stay anywhere else. <laughs> Wait, we have a hallway? Except for the lights flicker. Look at that. Can it get some flicker-free lights in here in this fancy hotel room? Good thing here in the menu, I have this flickerless option. And just like the Panasonic, I now have fine control over my shutter speed. Synchronize that with the light so I don't see the flicker anymore. <gasps> oh my gosh! <gasps> Holy crap! Oh, snap. Oh, oh my gosh, you oh my almost God. lost it! Oh, almost just... What if you just went... Do we share this with somebody? No. What the hell yeah. is this? Running track up here, we just run back and forth. How's the Ibis is the real question. This feels much too luxurious for us. Yeah. But you know who it's not too luxurious for? Peta. <laughs> Peta. Peta's just like, finally I'm home. I'm definitely getting a backdrop for the set back home here. So this would be perfect. Another thing that's nice about the bottom plate from the gimbal is that I can just go ahead and put it on here because it's Arca Swiss. And this actually even fits in the peak design, like the shoulder strap backpack thing. Just gotta make sure I'm uh, level here. So we got that horizon line, which is useful. Take off the ND filter, close down the lens so that we get everything in focus. I am wishing that there were more exposure tools though. I mean, like I've got this like little meter right here. We turn on zebras, but no false color. Another thing that's really nice about this menu is that I have a lot of control over the bit rate over my H265 because I'm about to just record at 6.2K for over an hour. So I want to just be able to control how big of a file that is. And since there's not that much going on in the frame, I think I could probably just do this at a low data rate, even at 50 megabits per second. And H.265 is always just surprisingly decent. So I'll go ahead and just 
We'll let it roll now. And it's already time to check out. Man, that I don't want to leave. I was just absolutely loving the view. I literally, I want to stay here all the time. You get the same view from like Caesar's Palace and the Bellagio, but the Cosmopolitan has this balcony. But first impressions of this Fuji film, I do like the look out of it. I've been shooting everything in F-Log2 and converting it over to the Eterna color profile. Soft color and rich shadow tones suitable for film look movie. It feels pretty neutral. It's not super contrasty and saturated and the, the shadows look nice and soft. The lens I've been using up to now is the 18 millimeter f1.4 but there's definitely some other lenses i want to try out like look at this thing i love these little pancake lenses this is a 27 mil f2.8 that's just we have that smaller super 35 sensor what is that 27 times 1.5 around 40 mil i think yeah something like that but look at this i love just being able to just like cruise around with just like this if you look at it from the side you can't even tell there's a lens on there really <laughs> but this thing though 50 mil f1.0 1.0 what the hell I already got some low light test shots with it and it looks pretty amazing. And I've actually been relying on the autofocus on here and I wasn't expecting it to be that good, but so far it's been pretty solid except for when it gets really dark then it goes to trash so at that point i had to go into manual focus the thing i'm definitely not too impressed with is the ibis image stabilization i mean when i turn it on and vlog with it it still gives me that harshness of that shake but there's another reason why we love our dji gimbal But what was kind of insane to me is that this entire setup here, it weighs this much. I have to weigh it out later, so that's why. But considering how lightweight this is, I'm still recording 6.2K ProRes 422HQ. That's gimbal stabilized. Like, like, that's crazy to me. But the reason why I decided to go with the RS3 Mini for this trip is because I'm trying to pack lightweight and minimal for this trip. And it pretty much does all the functions I need it to for solo operation. And even though right now I have this tiny little pancake lens on here, it can handle a proper 24 to 70 f 2.8 those are not lightweight lenses it comes in at under 400 can't forget the underslung mode shots these motion shots always look so much cooler if you could add a little bit of parallax so getting something in the foreground and almost having layers so if you're ever taking some gimbal shots and you're like why does this look boring just try to find something in the foreground so if i'm filming that car i'm gonna put this car in the foreground and just slide around a little bit it really adds that element of motion I love the sound effects. So whenever I'm doing gimbal work, I always feel like I'm doing some martial arts and like Tai Chi, like <sighs> soft, like heel toe step. Yeah. Another benefit of the RS3 Mini, we remove a piece and then we could just go ahead and remount it vertically so we can get portrait video, which is now a necessity. It makes me sad because I'm definitely a, a widescreen guy, but now I'm old for saying that. I guess if I want to stay relevant, I need to start doing this TikTok stuff. So yeah, if you're curious about the RS3 Mini, links down there in the description. And if you're doing more pro work and you want to accessorize it to be set up bigger, I'll also leave a link to the RS3 Pro and also the O3 Air unit. Why not? That's the FPV camera that I'm flying right now. All right, we're back home. And right now on top of the IBIS, I'm trying out a digital image stabilization, which is a 1.1 X crop. When I was recording in 6.2K, that digital image stabilization was grayed out. But now that I lowered the resolution to 4K in H.265, it popped up. So maybe this is a better option for vlogging. Really what I need is a wider lens. Working with what we've got here. Good morning, our number one customer. Look at what camera I'm using right now. I see that. Fujifilm? Is this two? Your yes. 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 I'll have to ask you about this in a second, but first I need some coffee. First major upgrade in Distrito. Balcony E65S grind by weight grinder. And I put it in, that's it? Yeah. What? It turns green, you can grab it. Our last one was super loud. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Yeah. Good. Weather's changing, it's getting better, yeah. so. Sweet. Getting more customers in here, which is great. People like him, really cool cameras and stuff. Oh, you, you trying to show me up here? What is that? Oh, is that, that's medium format stuff. It's an old one, but still great. So medium freaking format. Holy crap, that is ginormous. This is a 0.79 crop, I believe. So like less than one, so reverse crop. The reason why I wanted to check out Fujifilm is because I hear it has like a very filmic look which would make sense because it's Fuji, Fuji film, film. <laughs> not Fuji digital. But then there's Fujinon, those lenses are like yeah. freaking fantastic. Really like, long ones that are like- Yeah, like, like yeah. the Cabrio 19 to 90. <laughs> Your photo first photo over first. video. Yeah. Uh, and do you feel like as someone that used to shoot a lot of film, do you get similar results that you're satisfied with the Fujifilm? Uh, yes. As I started shooting film, like film just got more expensive and more expensive. That was like, you know, I could just buy this Fujifilm camera and emulate all of 
the film stocks that I was shooting. I think it has like a 16-bit RAW file coming out of here, mm -hmm. which is crazy, so you can manipulate shadows and highlights super well. But just the baked-in film simulations that come out of Fujifilm, the colors that they end up rendering to a JPEG, it just is so tasty. But there's actually a app and a forum. It's called Fuji X Weekly. It's like a conglomeration of all these film recipes and all the settings to get different looks from different film stocks in your Fujifilm cameras. So you hmm. can check that out. There's kind of like a whole community dedicated to like achieving specifically the film look. Can you send me a few of the photos you've taken with this camera and I'll just yeah. put them on the screen. Of course. Look at these beautiful images. I don't yeah. even know what we're looking at right <laughs> now, but later I'm going to edit in some photos. Yeah. Wow, beautiful. In video, at least if I want to shoot in log, I have F-Log and F-Log 2. But I feel like what they need to do is create those film emulations and have have a bunch of LUTs that you could just apply to this F-Log2 footage. That way you could just shoot F-Log2 and then still have the, the film emulations. Oh, I wasn't whatnot. thinking about that. That would be but cool. Yeah. Too, but I wonder if I could turn off the log and shoot with a baked in look, which I probably wouldn't really do because I, I think you can. like to maintain the flexibility. But here, let me try Let me turn off the log. I think uh, the Eterna film simulation is like their go-to video film simulation. Yeah, because if I shoot F-Log2, the primary LUT that I can download off their website is the, the Eterna. Eterna LUT. So almost all this footage has just been F-Log2 converted over to Eterna. There you go. Okay, so yeah, I can apply it to video. The only downside is it's not Baked oh, yeah, in. flexible, yeah. I think it's baked into your video files. Yeah, I like the warmness of this nostalgia one. Like if I wasn't planning on shooting in F-Log and grading, this would be pretty nice. This one was taken on the GFX. That one was a raw photo. So that was a little corrected out of camera. This one, not on the GFX, but still pretty. Where'd you take this on? That is actually on a Mia 645 Super. So that's medium format film. They both kind of look like film, yeah. so. Yeah, that, that, was cool. the, that was the goal. It's almost like a milky look to it, yeah. right? That's like a... The GFX renders highlights specifically really well. The right. last one. And then we go into the bathroom here. Third so one, 50 megapixel black and white JPEG straight out of the GFX. And Alex's photography right here. Where does that go? Does that go to your Instagram or what? Pretty sure that goes to my website. This is a Mamiya RB67. Started my whole film obsession. This is also medium format? This is medium format, six by seven negative. And so much money through this camera is the reason why I bought a Fujifilm GFX. <laughs> How much does it cost to take one photo with oh, that thing? One photo with processing, two dollars, two fifty a photo. So you got to be very intentional with every photo. Super huh? intentional. If you guys want to look through the viewfinder, Ooh, let's see here. If I move the camera right, you're gonna see it go left. Oh, huh. and you're looking directly off of the mirror. If you take a photo on your Sony, are you like, what the hell is this? Ew. Not well, no. It just takes a little more work to get there. Yeah. <laughs> and then over here we have Frank, who just bought. A Sony! Yeah, Finally nah, you switched! Nah, 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 no, nah. oh, you didn't. Okay. The Canon R6 Mark II. And I'm <laughs> loving it right now. <laughs> Dude, you must be excited. You get I'm the jazzed, Canon. Yeah. So between us, I'm the Sony and Panasonic guy. You're the Canon guy. And you're the Fujifilm. That's me. We need a Nikon, dude. Yeah. 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 This is Povia Standard. You look very colorful. Oh, thank you. So if you're just trying to get an image just straight out of camera, you don't have to do any sort of processing to it or anything, but then you can adjust it. This is kind of like the JPEG of shooting video, right? Now this is Bleach Bypass. I'm liking this one. This is just pro negative standard. It's just very kind of calm, but still it's like, it's like saturated, but not super saturated. Classic Chrome. So we do also have 4K 120 and Full HD at 240, but both of them do have somewhat of a crop, but we could do Full HD 120 with no crop. Kind of curious how that looks. Whoa. Don't fall. Dang, 1.4. On a medium format sensor. Yeah. It's crazy. So that depth of field is like the extra shallow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like literally I could get like part of your eye in focus and then nothing else. It is cool just having the look baked into all these shots when you're previewing it. And you take it with JPEG and RAW. So if you ever decide, oh, I don't want that black and white, you could go back and recover. Yep. Dude, the colors on this camera are looking really nice right now. Yep, Fujifilm's color science during golden hour. Wow, this is pretty cool right here. Yeah, I'm actually waiting for the R50 to come in. I'm testing that out because it's just like the budget version. Yeah, so, you yeah, know, yeah. It's like episode on that coming soon. Going black and white here. Oh, you got your zebras on. Yeah, I got to use zebras because there's no like false color or waveforms. I really like waveforms. That's one of the things that's nice about Panasonic is you get waveforms. This guy has false colors. That has false color? Yeah, in here. What? Oh, Excuse dang, me. you have false color yeah. in a Canon R6? Dang. That's crazy, huh? Well, actually, that's funny because I'm filming in black and white, so you actually can't tell. <laughs> now we're at nostalgia. It goes that's away cool. when you hit the record button, but oh, it's all good. Nostalgia. Look at those colors. 
That looks good. It looks pretty good, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like this looks color graded already almost. It is definitely fun playing with these different profiles though. I don't even know if they're technically color profiles. They're like film simulations. It just sounds so much cooler. Like filter, it could just filters. be filters, but yeah. film simulation. It sounds so much cooler. Classic negative. Definitely feels kind of dark. Classic chrome makes you look like a badass, Frank. 13, 13. I am a Classic badass. Classic chrome. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about, man? Not when you're on Vivid. I'm nah, not a badass. You don't look right? as badass anymore, no. You look very like vibrant. A, and... Like a regular person. Yeah, no, black and white. You always look like a badass in black and white, no yeah. matter what. Oh my god, we have sepia on here. <laughs> oh. It's like the first filter on like every old school camera. You know, it's like, look, we have filters, <laughs> yeah, yeah. sepia, and yeah. it just looks like yeah. dirt. I'm sure if it was used right, it'd be kind of interesting. You can never use sepia right, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we went ahead and sent the camera back to Fujifilm. So thanks so much to them for letting us try out the camera. I had a great time with the camera and I may or may not have flown it on an FPV drone, even though it's not covered under our insurance. Come on, I had to try it out, okay? I hear it has a really fast readout speed. So basically, unless your sensor is a global shutter like the Red Komodo, it's probably a CMOS sensor that gets scanned from the top down, kind of like that TikTok filter. CMOS sensor is basically a much faster version of this, which you usually don't see, but if you do some fast movements or whip pants, then you start to see those straight lines kind of get bendy and get that jello effect. So the sensor readout and ProRes and 120 frames per second was cool, but not a super ideal drone camera because of that IBIS. Vibrations that come off the drone, it just doesn't play very well with IBIS, even if you turn off the IBIS. One of the things I really like about Canon cameras and Panasonics is that you could actually grab the playhead and just scrub towards the end or beginning. This menu is more like the Sony where I gotta like fast forward and then find the spot I wanna play back and then just play like that. It's like a, a VCR almost. Oh, by the way, what do you guys think of the new view from the studio? I'm gonna skip ahead to the fountain show here. I don't have to wait for 20 minutes like I do in real life. This was recording straight for almost two hours or so before the battery died. The camera didn't overheat on me at all while I was using it, but you can get this attachment for the back of it, which is a fan, which helps cool it off faster in case you're planning on doing some heavy work with it. So one of the things I've been contemplating is if I want to take this desk and move it back to its original spot. I mean, I moved it here because I can just look straight at the camera and it's just a little bit more practical, but I think I like aesthetically the other one better. So uh, I'm gonna start moving stuff back. But what did you guys think about the footage out of the Fujifilm? I would say at first I didn't notice a huge difference, but definitely when I did a little bit of manipulating to especially like the shadows, I definitely saw it there. I didn't really do any color grading to the Fuji footage. I just kind of did a little bit of exposure correction because my first batch of footage was not the best exposure. So I just did some corrections. But other than that, I just left it alone. But the biggest thing is those film simulations. Those are cool. The actual film has a ton of dynamic range. So since they're trying to emulate that, they don't really clip off the highlights. And so I feel like if I had the time to just kind of go in and just get comfortable with the simulations and really dial them in the way I want, may not be a terrible option. And when it comes to the low light performance, considering that it's a Super 35, sensors perform pretty good. But I will say when I was filming a lot of this, I was like, man, the low light on this camera sucks. It's because when you're looking at the back of the screen, everything looks super grainy. And I was like, oh, this is gonna look terrible. But then I look back at the footage and it looks much cleaner. So for whatever reason on the back of the screen, it looks awful. But then you put it on here and it looks great. And I think this is roughly the placement we were doing. Of course, I have to change the camera angle because I have to slouch like this to make sure I have this headroom here. Or is this a new creative composition? You know, like Mr. Robot, how they did like the wackiest compositions. Like, like they would compose shots like this. Anyways, I think I'm gonna finish setting this up when I have somebody else sitting here for me so I could be behind the camera. It's always hard to try to set up a shot when you have to go behind the camera and look at it and then come back and forth. Stand-ins are useful. Why don't I go ahead and wrap this up with a few comments. Johnny says, can we take a moment to appreciate Gene's full on sprint mode? Tom Cruise ain't got nothing on you. <laughs> okay, so Carrie thinks I run like Tom Cruise and she's always said that for some reason. Hey, Carrie. You changed everything. Yes, I did. Again, are you surprised? <laughs> No. Here you go. We're talking about Tom Cruise run. Oh my gosh! I've always told you you run like you're my Tom Cruise. That's <laughs> one of the reasons why I fell in love with you. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but Gene doing the Tom Cruise sprint for the craft. Total Tom Cruise thing there. <laughs> You've got the Tom Cruise run. Thank you people for the validation. I've been telling him for years. Except for I can only do the Tom Cruise run for like four and a half seconds before I'm winded. <laughs> Robert says that slide pod looks awesome. It, it is pretty cool. Honestly, I've had that thing for a while and I just haven't really figured out a good use for it. But when you can attach a gimbal to the tip of it, it definitely makes it a lot cooler. But the thing that was frustrating to me was that you control it through the app and it would constantly disconnect from the app. Your screen window is so convincing. Ah, thank you. Except for it's not calibrated yet. I, I'll get to that eventually. One day YouTubers will come with detachable heads so they can film themselves. 
Oh my gosh, that would be amazing. I was just saying how it's so hard to be your own stand-in. If I could just pop my head off and throw it behind the camera and I just wander around. Oh my God, I can actually do that with FPV goggles. But that is all, click on stuff if you want more of this annoying guy right here and see you guys later. Have a good day.